So what do you do when you have a changing table or maybe a piece of baby furniture that you don't want to get rid of? Well, you turn it into something else. So that's what I did. I'm going to show you in this video how I took this $12 thrifted changing table from my youngest son and turned it into a desk for my oldest son. So the first thing I did was I needed to remove the bottom shelves. This actually had a second shelf and a lower shelf and I started by removing those. And I discovered something really cool that the second shelf was actually like a piece of whiteboard. So I set that aside and I knew that I was going to use that again. Now the top needed to be reinforced if I was going to make this into a desk. I have to tell you guys, please do not follow what you see me doing here. This is not the proper way to use power tools. I should have had this clamped down, should have been wearing a mask. I think all I was wearing were my glasses. So please don't follow what I did. Not good practice. Anyway, I cut the piece to size and was very pleasantly surprised that it actually fit. So I had to do my little happy dance there. So the next thing that I was going to do was to see if I could put this piece of shelving on the back to make a whiteboard using the same framing that was already on the shelf. And yeah, I'm pretty excited there. So you see me wiping it off and I thought, hey, this is a great idea. Why don't I flip it over and put it on the back? So here I am just testing it out, seeing what size I needed to cut it down to. And I'm so excited. So I trimmed a little bit off, probably about maybe an inch. Again, making sure that you're supposed to clamp this down. I did not clamp. I cannot believe I made these errors three years ago, but that's what I did. Anyway, I went ahead and test fit it and it fit. So I knew that this was going to actually work. And I tell people all the time, you know, when you're doing an upcycled project, don't feel like you need to come up with all the ideas before you start. Sometimes it's a matter of working on the project and like this, ideas happen, creative ideas happen. And so you just go with the flow. So here I'm test fitting it. It looks like it's going to work and I'm really excited about that. Changing tables are a little tall, so I had to cut about three and a half inches off the bottom so that it would sit lower like a desk. And again, some stupid error that I made, do not use power tools in your socks. I filmed this video about three years ago before I really knew what I was doing with power tools. So you would never catch me in the garage or anywhere near a power tool with socks. So please don't do that. All right, so I'm lifting this, this changing table up now and I'm giving it a little shake to make sure that it's even and surprisingly it was. Now the next thing I wanted to do was cut off those rounded edges from the top of the changing table. The reason why is because I just felt like it still made it look like a changing table and I didn't want that. So again, I used my circular saw, making sure that I should have been wearing shoes, proper shoes and safety gear. And I went ahead and just lobbed off the top of that on both sides. And you'll see that I'm going to put a board that is straight. I think it just gave it more of a desk look than a changing table look. So I had some scrap wood lying around and I just cut a piece and put it on there. My cuts were not really that even. So I found myself putting a little bit of wood filler underneath just to kind of even it out and fill in some of those gaps. And, you know, I put the back of it on and it looked pretty good. Once I painted it, one cohesive color, it was going to look like it was coming together more. So the paint that I'm using is Annie Sloan Antibus Green. It's one of my favorite colors of hers and I think it looks really good. So at this point I went through, gave it two really good coats and I don't show it here in this video, but I did add some additional detailing like, you know, white lines and I love to sort of decorate furniture in that kind of way. This color is called Florence, another really beautiful color, and I think it looks really good with the Anibis Green. And I wanted to do something here that, well, I don't know, I thought maybe my son would read it and be inspired, but it says it does not matter how slowly you go as long as you don't stop. It's a quote that I found from Confucius, and I thought it was really good. So I used my personal cutting machine with some vinyl and did a stencil. And while the stencil was drying, I took some Gorilla Glue, put it in the grooves, and then added those to the DIY whiteboard. So then while the glue was drying, it was time to put on some of the glue to the top of the desk. And I just added a bead of it all around the top and then just smeared on as much as I could. And I didn't want to ruin the paint job that I just did, so I used a piece of extra fabric and just pushed it down, making sure I didn't scuff up the paint. 
and I was surprised. It actually turned out it was looking really, really good. And again, because the sides were not totally even when I cut them, I put a little bit of wood filler down so that if there were any gaps, after I nailed it with my Ryobi nailer, I could smooth out that wood filler and then later when it dries, come back and sand it out, make it really smooth. So, you know, hey, wasn't perfect, but it looked good when I was done and with paint, it would cover all of that up. So I did the left side and then I did the right side. And at this point, I could use my nailer to secure the back piece to the DIY whiteboard. Now, at that time, I was not even really using the nailer properly. Again, I don't think I even had on, maybe maybe I had glasses, I'm not even sure, but you can see my nails were not even set into the wood. I totally didn't know what I was doing. And you can see the heads of the nail. Anyway, you know, you live and you learn. But I went ahead and used the nailer to fasten the DIY, DIY whiteboard to the sides on the left and on the right. And at that point, I had to just come back a day later once the wood filler was dry and just smooth it out and do the finishing touches on the paint. And then it was done. You can see that I have a little bit of uh, detailing here where I've got some white lines and I tried to do the sides a different color. And overall, it just looked really, really good. It was sturdy. And I couldn't believe that I had created this. So I had posted this on my blog three years ago, but I just never did the video. Oh, and you know those legs that I cut off from the bottom? I turned them into little snowmen. It was a little snowman family. And we are done. The desk is finished. I am so excited. I love it. Guys, what do you think? Good. Come sit down. Come try it. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> okay, I think my kids are going to awesome. destroy it. Please do not destroy the desk. All right, do you guys like the desk? Yes. No. No, my kids don't like it. Ungrateful little children. Hey, I like it. Okay, good. So you can tell by this video, my kids were really young. This was three years ago that I filmed this. I just never posted the video. I never edited the video. And if you're wondering, yes, my kids still use this desk. It's actually my oldest son's desk. This is where he sits every day to do computer, to do his schoolwork, and it really has become a part of our life. I mean, this is his desk, and there's my little snowman family, which the kids destroyed, so those did not last. But anyhow, this is one of my favorite projects that I've ever done. I think it's one of the most creative. You know, we took a piece of furniture that we got from the thrift store for $12 and turned it into something that we've been using for years and years to come. So if you like this project, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Go back to my blog, thriftdiving.com, and subscribe because I'll send you five ebooks, printables, checklists, and also I'll help you get started with your own DIY projects. For now, I'll talk to you next project.